Hi everyone, my name is Alina Roscoe, Youth Ministry Apprentice, and this is Sundays at St. Hilary's. How are you all doing this week? I hope you're still doing well and you're excited to find out what we're learning about this time. This is for the four readings that go along with Sunday, September 12th, 2021. Our first reading is in Wisdom chapter 7, verses 26 to chapter 8, verse 1, which speaks about exactly that, wisdom. How wisdom is a reflection of eternal light. It reflects the work of God and visibly shows his goodness. This is because when we have wisdom, we understand God better through learning about all that he did and said when he worked through other people. We come to know our history so profoundly and in a meaningful way I hope you will take the time to gain wisdom through reading and listening to the Bible, discussing and reflecting about it, and taking what you learn and applying it to your day-to-day -day lives. That with wisdom, much can be done and much can be renewed, our reading tells us. It has the ability to positively impact so much that in every generation, she wisdom passes its holy passes into holy souls and makes them friends of god for god loves when people live with wisdom it makes us beautiful and surpass limitations wisdom is something that god wants for us as he knows the difference it will make in our lives and in our relationship with him he encourages us toward positive paths like this Lastly, how evil is no match for wisdom. It covers the world with good. To have wisdom is to have knowledge. And there is a well-known phrase that knowledge is power, which is very true. And that is why education of all kinds is such a gift. We can learn so much from our world, our community, our school, and our church. May we look for wisdom from God and absorb its great power. Let us use this to live well and help fellow people of God. Now, our second reading is in Psalm 19, and it is a Psalm of David. It starts by reminding us about how we can see God and celebrations of his glory around us, like in the sky, because the sky can display goodness that God has and surround us with its beauty. I'm curious. Do you prefer sunrises or sunsets? I love both, but for me, it's something so peaceful and calming when I'm able to watch a beautiful sunset as I slowly unwind for the evening. But I wonder, what are some other things that God has made that are so beautiful that you can think of and you can appreciate? Feel free to share these with me as I'd love to hear your ideas and discuss them with each other. There are so many amazing things that God has created. The list is basically endless, but it's really important to reflect on that and appreciate each one. Now this reading also reminds us that a message can be conveyed without words. That God can speak and be heard without words specifically to us. And so can we. I want you to reflect on some examples of this to see how this meaningful alternate form of communication can be seen throughout our days. How we can communicate and speak without words. Such as we can tell if someone's smiling that they're probably happy or maybe if they're crying something's wrong and we should check in on them. But those are just two of the simple ways that we can tell these things, but there's so much that we can communicate also, right? By our actions and how we visibly look and what we do, everything like that. So much can communicate, which is pretty awesome. So reflect on some of those ways and realize the next time it happens too, that this is still amazing for you in your life, a blessing that we're able to share with each other without always having to use words, especially if we're not able to for some reason. Now, the reading in this psalm also talks about the sun and that God created the sun that is in the sky and it has its power and 
is so present every day. So what are some significances of the sun? Well, it brings warmth and light, which can help us to see in the daytime the beauty that God has created and see each other, which is part of that. With the sun, it also helps plants and flowers and crops to grow so that we have food and nutrition. And the sun can make us happy because it makes us feel good and like so positive when we have that soaking into our skin, which can make all the difference. That's why sometimes we get a little bit sad in the winter, but we can be mindful of this and do things to help each other during this time. Now this psalm also reminds us that what God tells us in his teachings and his rules are perfect and revive our souls. We can trust in God and his true words as he is absolutely right. They will give us wisdom and it tells us directly so that way we can have insight for living. That we can be happy people who thrive in our life on God's earth. God wants us to follow in what he has told us. He has sweet rewards for loyal people. To remember that in a society where we can find lies from people or you know companies or different things like that, we can always count on God to be true and to be there for us. God knows everything and he shares what he can with us so that we can have wisdom, which we've learned is so important. That we can know which paths to take in our lives so that we can live as happy as possible. Now, where can we gain a lot of wisdom from? Well, from reading the Bible, we can hear about God's words and works through people by taking time to learn from the Bible. So my friends, I encourage you to take the time in your day or your week throughout your life to spend time with God, especially through, you know, reading or listening to the Bible. To learn about his son Jesus and the history of the world. To come to know his teachings and all that we can understand, which brings us closer to God and within this holy relationship. The psalm ends by asking God to cleanse me from these hidden faults, from sins that we have, and even those we may not realize that we do. For what we say, think, feel, and do can then be aligned with God's wishes. This reminds us that we can always speak to God and ask Him to help guide us and to forgive us and to wipe the slate clean, so to speak, of any bad that there is in us or in society in general, um, so that way there's only room for good. We can have more goodness in our life to receive and then to give out with God's help. We just need to ask, right? We can't do anything fully alone. That's why we have God and we have people that God put into our lives. May we absorb the important messages and teachings from God let us follow God wholeheartedly, being loyal and true in this. Now, our third reading is in James chapter 3, verse 1 to 12, which begins with the title of Controlling the Tongue. It explains that our tongue is connected to the rest of our body in the sense that it impacts the rest of what we do. That no matter what other factors are at play, our mouth controls a lot. It can do wondrous things or let out bad things. For a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire and the tongue is a flame in a symbol, of course. Therefore, we must be careful as it cannot be tamed like other things. For example, with the same tongue that praises God can be the same one that speaks the worst of and against other children of God. We must not bless and then curse. That doesn't make sense. That contradicts each other and is not what God is wishing for us. He wants us to treat each other well and with such love like that he has for us. This reading really serves as a reminder of the power of our words, for better or for worse. That what we can say can hurt people, feeling like they've been physically hit or kicked 
or have the opposite effect and bring someone happiness and making their day. We can be totally bad or totally good. It's such a contrast, but we know which one to pick. This is why there is the expression, think before you speak. This way we reflect on what we think before we decide to say it, as this can show us whether it's a good or bad choice before we actually do it. The question is, which side do you want to be on? I am going to make a promise to myself every day for the sake of, you know, my character and also for the good of others to intentionally try to do good and choose it every single day. To be a superhero, not a villain. Choosing to use what we have that is special to offer it. All of God's children can then share in this wonderful kindness and love to treat all people as the important children of God that they are, like God wants. The world will be better for it. Instead, brothers and sisters, we should choose good. And I know you can and that I can, so let's be intentional about making good choices that help other people to want to do good and so we can make the choice to do that. To never let evil in, so that goodness will always win. May we be aware of the power of the tongue and tread carefully. Let us use the power of speech for good and not bad, always. Now, our fourth and final reading is in Mark chapter 8, verses 27 to 38. And it starts with the title of Peter's Declaration About Jesus. In this reading, we are reminded of the time when Jesus asked his disciples about who it was that people said he was. They told him the different answers people had said before. And the thing is that people back then were very misinformed, so they had all kinds of ideas of who Jesus was that were obviously not the correct answer. So many answers, but not any that were the right one. So. Jesus then wanted to see if his disciples at least knew who he was, hopefully. So after Jesus did take the time to ask his disciples who they would say that he is, Peter replied by saying, you are the Messiah. Peter was right. He was. For Jesus was the one and only son of God, the Messiah who had come to save us. But then, because he's saving us, later in this reading, it has a section with the title, Jesus predicts his death, right? Because in order to save us, he had to die on the cross. So, as Jesus is the Son of God, he knows all, like God, our Almighty Father. Therefore, Jesus knew long before it happened about what his fate would be. He told his disciples so that they would know what was going to happen that he would be killed, but three days later, he would rise from the dead. However, they did not want to hear this, especially Peter. The disciples, like I said, especially Peter, was in denial and did not want to believe that this was the truth, right? Because sometimes the truth is hard to hear, but that doesn't change the fact that it is true. So they needed to have accepted that it was tough, but that it was true, but they didn't even though we know that everything God tells us is the truth, and therefore the same applies for Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus was there to save us, and so he wanted to give his disciples kind of like a warning, a heads up, so they wouldn't be worried. He was so happy to do this for us that he was not afraid, and so he didn't want other people to be. He loves us so much that he did that then and he still supports us now in our day to day so that we could be saved and that we could then be thankful because we have a relationship with God through Jesus and that there's no limitations on this, no barriers holding us back from this so that we can have our life on earth with him and then one day in heaven. In this reading, Jesus tells the disciples to really think of things not just like in an earthly way but like just from a human point of view but from God's perspective like a heavenly perspective and he explained to the disciples and the crowd around that if any of you wants to be my follower you must give up your own way 
take up your cross and follow me. That one must wholeheartedly love God and be loyal and be dedicated in following Jesus. That they will then be saved. That we must never be ashamed of Jesus or his message. Even my puppy Luca agrees. We must be proud that we are Christians and that we love God and his son Jesus. So instead, my friends, we must rejoice in the truth of God and his son Jesus. We should be proud of our faith and happy to tell people about it. Our first identity is as a child of God. And then we are humans and we are Christians. And we can be proud that these are all parts of who we are. May we always know the truth that Jesus is the Messiah and happily share it with any and all who would like to hear it. Let us try our best to follow Jesus in all of our days. Well, this has been wonderful talking to all of you. And before I go, I'd like to end our time together in prayer. So I invite you to join me in your own special way. Dear God, thank you for the wisdom you instill in us, especially through what we learn in the Bible. May we strive for wisdom and take what it gives us and use it for goodness within your glorious world. Thank you for all the beautiful things you have created and let us share in it within our lives. May we realize that messages exist without words sometimes. Please help us to also though reach out to you for help in wiping our slates clean of the bad and bringing close all of the good. To never forget that God is always there for us, which is you, and is the one and true constant thing in our lives. Thank you for helping us to stay on good paths, despite our temptations to stray sometimes. Please help us to be aware of our words and the impacts it can have. May we use our gift of language and the ability to communicate always for your glory. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to save us. May we not let ourselves be misinformed, misunderstand, or be in disbelief, but instead accept the truths you tell us, let us take up our cross, and follow Jesus as loyal and proud beloved children of God. In your name we pray, amen. Well, thanks for joining me, and I hope you will next time. Until then, this has been Sundays at St. Hilary's.